Hello my scholars, you welcome to my school YouTube channel. My name is Emmanuel and in today's video we'll be considering topic by topic video lessons in chemistry. Please don't go anywhere, stick around and we'll be right back. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we'll be looking at solubility. Now, let's get down to it. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define what solubility is. You should be able to mention and explain the factors that affect solubility. You should be able to also state and explain the types of solubility that we have. We have saturated, we have unsaturated, we have super saturated. You should be able to explain all of those types of solubility. Then you should also be able to determine solubility. How do we determine the solubility of substances of a solute? Okay, remember that for us to have solution, we have solute reacting usually with solvent to give us solution. So whether it's your salt that is the solute reacting with solvent, water for example and then you have the salt solution so how do we determine the solubility content of that particular solute we are going to look at that also we'll be talking about the solubility curve so you should be able to explain what the solubility curve is all about or the solubility graph whichever one we are saying the same thing and then you should be able to make calculations calculate i know this is an aspect where most students find it difficult calculations on solubility at the end of it now let's get to the next slide solubility is said to be the ability of a substance in this case now we are talking about a solute okay remember solute is that substance that dissolves inside a solvent okay for instance in most cases we could have them as solids okay we will have liquids too if it is solid like salt okay we talk about the mass of that substance now that dissolves for instance like your common salt okay the one we eat at home if you put that into water and then you stir it dissolves eventually so that salt is your solute so ability for that solute now which is substance now to dissolve in a solvent at a particular temperature usually temperature plays a good one. by the time we talk about the factors that affect you we see how temperature can affect the solubility of that substance so in nutshell we are saying that solubility is the ability of a substance or you can say of a solute to dissolve in a solvent at a particular temperature solubility tends to compare the extent to which different solutes can dissolve in a particular solvent at a definite temperature because we talk about temperature because if we have the temperature at which a particular solute dissolves might be different from the one at which another one dissolves. Again, at a particular temperature, it is possible that all the solutes could dissolve in the solvent. And it is possible that at another temperature, we could have just few amounts of that solute dissolve inside of the solvent. So, solubility tends to measure, it compares the extent to which the different solutes can what? Can dissolve at a particular temperature it's a key factor for instance most substances tend to dissolve in water we refer to water as a universal solvent because most substances you put in there it will dissolve if not all it can dissolve some certain amount or quantity of that solute can be dissolved in so water is a universal solvent in most cases we have most substances dissolving in it however their rate of solubility differ from the other if you get salt some certain salt you put it in water you can stir for a longer time if we apply it it might take a longer time compared to maybe the common salt the one we use at home in cooking if you dissolve that that could the dissolution rate okay or the solubility rate could be faster compared to some other kind of salt so solubility helps us to determine the extent to which the solute can dissolve when it is put in a solvent. Let's move on to the next slide now. Factors affecting solubility. Now, these factors we want to consider now to a greater extent can determine 
if the solute is going to be soluble, the extent to which, the rate at which is going to dissolve in that solute. To make it easier, I would want to say that whenever we talk about solute, though not limited, always look at your common salt, the table salt we use in cooking at home. That is an example of a solute. And then when we talk about solvent, we can have water because that's a universal solution. what dissolves the solute is what we call solvent okay so let us i'm not saying those are the only ones we have but to make it easier for better understanding solute you can liken it to be a salt a whole while um uh, water can be said to be a solvent so the main factors that affect solubility are the nature of the solute and solvent that is one temperature is another one factor that can affect it. The third one is the pressure and then the fourth one is the molecular interactions between them. Let's look at the first one, temperature. For most solids dissolve in a liquid, solubility increases with increasing temperature. What do we mean by that? If I get water, ordinary water, and I take quantity of salt, let's say a teaspoon of salt, I pour it into it, I can leave it there, it's possible it could take two hours or three hours before the old salt get dissolved in that particular what? Particular solvent, which is water. Now, that is ordinary water. If I take the same quantity of salt and I pour it into hot water, water that is already boiled, okay, you find out that the salt tends to dissolve faster compared to the one that is just in the ordinary water. So which means that the difference is just what? In the temperature. Maybe the temperature of the ordinary water was, let's say it's around the 20 degrees Celsius, but the one that is boiling at 100 degrees Celsius, if you pour in the same quantity of salt into the two, uh, in the, into the two solutions, you discover that the one that has higher temperature, that it's tending towards the boiling point or at boiling point, the salt is going to dissolve faster compared to that. So which means that temperature plays a bigger role when it comes to what? Solubility of solute. So for most solute dissolved in a liquid, solubility increases with increasing temperature. Higher temperatures provide more kinetic energy to the solute molecules. That's what happens. By the time we have the water boiling and then you have the solute inside of it because the molecules of the salt begin to move from one place to the other because the, it is excited. The, the, the molecules are excited. And because they're excited, they begin to move from one place to the other. As they are moving, it makes them to dissolve faster. So in that sense, now the kinetic energy is increased. When the kinetic energy is increased, what happens? You discover that the molecules begin to, work, to dissolve gradually, gradually, and gradually. So we are saying higher temperatures provide more kinetic energy to the solute molecules helping them to overcome the forces holding them together and increasing their solubility. The forces, the strong force of attraction that is binding those molecules together are broken easily because the temperature is increased and on the other hand, the kinetic energy is also increased of the solute tend towards increase as well. So, in other words, so that is responsible. That is what makes for most solids to be dissolved in liquid as solubility will increase as temperature also will increase so temperature is one of the major factors that affect solubility let's move on to the next slide the solubility of gases in liquids now when we are talking about solubility we can have solubility of gases in liquids we can also have solubility when it is of solids too now solubility of gases in liquids generally decreases as temperature increases. I'll say that again. The solubility of gases in liquid, ability for because when we talk about salt now, like I said earlier on, solubility is not limited to solids alone. Okay, we could have solid substances like a salt dissolving in water, but we have gases situation where gases can also dissolve, are also soluble in liquids. Okay, in liquids generally, solubility will decrease of liquids will generally decrease as temperature increases. Why? This is because the dissolved gas molecules will escape more easily from the liquid at higher temperatures. Don't forget, kinetic theory, one of the theories says that the molecules of gases are always in random motion and they are moving, colliding with themselves, okay, 
and then together with the walls of the world container in which they are so the kinetic energy there is greater for molecules that are in gaseous state so because of that the dissolved gas molecules tend to escape more easily from the what from the liquid at higher temperature because as you eat as, as you increase the temperature of the liquid what happens of course we are talking about water boiling or the liquid in which it is so it's turning towards boiling as it's doing that what happened the kinetic energy is also what increases so the molecules of that gas at that point they want to escape more because the temperature is what is high that is the reason we talk about what gases being highly flammable you look at the you know the, the stations where you know they, they fill gases you see some things there to cool the temperature of the gases so that because the molecules the, the, the tendency of the gas molecules to become flammable okay at high temperatures maybe there is light a fire that is closer or it is running you know uh, uh, moving closer to someone that is smoking that is the reason they can work they can become flammable so easily because the molecules of the gases always want to escape at that particular point so the solubility of gases in liquids will decrease generally in what as what as the temperature what increases so the higher the temperature what happens the lower the solubility okay as temperature increases what happens solubility begins what to decrease that is the case of that in gases in liquids but in solids for solids to dissolve in liquid what happens as temperature begins to increase what happens in solubility begins to also what to also increase so there are two different things solubility will increase in gases okay we 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 reduce we decrease in gases as temperature is increasing but if it is a solid dissolving in liquids what happens as temperature increases solubility also increases at that particular point the second factor that can affect solubility is the nature of the solutes and the solvents the nature of the solute and solvent that's what we refer to as like dissolving like like dissolved like we talk about the polar solutes like the salt okay dissolve well in polar solvents like water the salt sodium chloride is polar okay we have sodium positively charged chlorine ion negatively charged it's polar then we have it dissolving also in the polar solvent okay water is polar we have the hydrogen ion and then we have the oh negative okay also there so that is a polar solvent so we have the polar solvent we dissolve the polar solute so what if it is not polar what happens so while non-polar solutes like the oil for instance will dissolve well in non-polar solvents also that's why we said like dissolves like polar solute dissolves easily in polar solvents non-polar solutes will dissolve also in non easily in non-polar Solvent. So that is how it is. The reason is because substances with similar types of attractive forces between their molecules tend to what? Tend to mix together. That is the reason the nature of solute and the solvent to a greater extent can determine, can be a factor that can affect the solubility of the solute substances. Let's move on to the next slide. The third factor affecting solubility is pressure. Gases in liquids. We learn to look at the two scenarios again where we have gases dissolving in liquid and solids also dissolving in liquids. Gases in liquids. The solubility of a gas in the liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure of that gas above the liquid. The reason, or what this simply means, is that as the pressure uh, of the forces begin to increase, the pressure of the forces okay begin to increase more gas molecules will begin to what will move into the what into the solution will begin to get more you know of the molecules of the gases i'll say that again the solubility of gas in a liquid is directly proportional to the what to the partial pressure in other words the solubility of a gas in liquid will increase as it increases the partial pressure of that gas will also what above the liquid will also increase so they are what directly proportional and if the solubility the partial pressure of the gas molecules decreases what happens solubility also decreases so they are what directly proportional to each other the reason is because this means that increased pressure forces will what will increase pressure will force more gases will force more of the gas molecules the molecules of the gas also to what move into the 
solution. So that is the reason why the solubility of gases in liquid, okay, is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas above the liquid. We also look at a scenario where solids, okay, solutes are dissolved in liquids. How does the pressure determine that? Pressure has a negligible effect on the solubility of solids in liquids. Why? We have solids, the molecules are packed together. Don't forget, one of the characteristics of molecules is that they have definite shape. Yes, they have um, definite volume as well. Then we can also say that solid molecules, they have uh, forces that are binding the molecules together. Strong forces, intermolecular forces are binding those forces together. So, even if you increase the pressure, it has a negligible effect on the solubility of that solid in liquids. That's talking about the effect of what? Of pressure, now not temperature, of pressure. If you increase the pressure of it, the difference, the effect will almost be what? Be negligible. And then the fourth one is that the fourth factor that affects solubility or can determine the rate of solubility of a solute is the molecular interactions. The strength of the forces between solute and solvent particles plays a key role in determining the solubility of that particular solute. For a solute to dissolve, the solute solvent attractions must be strong enough to overcome the solute, solute and solvent solvent attractions. Don't forget that the solute, the salt, for instance, okay, they have there's an interaction between the two of them, and then we have the solute solvent also interaction between them. So the force must be must be strong enough, okay, to be able to what to overcome to break the bond between the solute and solute, as well as the bond between the solvent and the solvent molecule, so that we can be able to have interaction between the solute and the solvent. The solute eventually dissolving into what the solvent, because there must be what bond breakage. Those bonds may be, must be broken, and they must be so that they can be able to form solution that we talk about we're talking about solubility now we have come to the end of the preview of this video lesson if you want to have access to the full video you can do that by clicking on the link in the description below that takes you to the my school website there you'll be able to subscribe and have access to the full video and in the full video we'll be looking at the types of solubility we'll be looking at determination of solubility We'll be looking at calculations in solubility and we'll be looking at the solubility curve and solubility graph. I hope to see you there. I hope you enjoy this content. If yes, please don't forget to click on the like button, hit the subscribe button and finally tap on the notification bell to keep you informed once we upload our next video.